Hey guys, it's Chris. From cats helping people with autism to incredible rescues, join me as I reveal nine unusual friendships people have made with animals. Number nine, Mr. Souza and his penguin. This particular story started with a man named Zhao de Souza, who was a 71 year old man living in Rio de Janeiro. Sadly, he had lost his wife some time before, and so he was pretty much alone in a very big city. To pass the time, he would go walking alone on the beach. But one day, as he was doing his walk along the beach, he came across a penguin. This penguin, though, was covered in oil, which was killing it. This is actually a major concern for animal rights activists, and this particular penguin was caught up in this issue quite literally. Zhao saved the penguin from the waters and took it back to his house. From there, he went and slowly cleaned the penguin so it could be better, which is indeed the proper way to handle the situation when it comes to animals covered in oil. He then personally nursed the penguin back to health, and thus saved its life. Once back to full strength, Zhao sent the penguin back to the waters of the ocean so it could go back to wherever it came from. Usually this would be the end of this particular story. However, he named the penguin Dindim, and Dindim would keep coming back. Much to Zhao's delight to be clear, the penguin knew exactly where Zhao saved him, and so it swam back to that spot every year so it could be with Zhao, showing a connection that goes beyond mere gratitude. All told, they would stay together for about eight months before Dindim had to go home for the rest of the year. These two are so inseparable that Dindim actually follows Zhao wherever he goes, including into the village. You might think that Dindim being a penguin, he wouldn't be able to handle the more tropical climate of Brazil. But penguins used to live in Brazil at one point in time, so it doesn't really bother the bird more than you'd think. Which no doubt makes Zhao happy because he has a new companion in his life. Number 8. The Weight Loss Dog While dogs are widely considered to be one of the best pets in the world, their powers of healing are often not expressed as much as they can be. Such as with this particular story of one dog basically saving his owner's life in a roundabout way. Erico Gray was a very obese man and had numerous medical problems because of his weight. Nothing was working for him in regards to losing it, and so he went to get advice from his nutritionist. They made a very simple recommendation, get a dog. You might think this to be an odd suggestion, but dogs have been known to help their owners through medical issues and can arguably get people to do things better than people can. But O'Gray had an even better idea, get an obese dog, citing that it would make them have something in common, and they started to work together to lose the weight. It's an interesting motive. O'Gray grew truly attached to his dog, which he called Petey and they worked together every day to lose weight and become healthier together. Through their exercises, Petey lost 25 pounds, and Eric lost an astounding 150 pounds. The true were now truly healthy, as well as very happy together. In fact, O'Gray commented that he never had a friend that he cared about more than Petey. So he lost weight, and he gained a companion. This is another case of an animal and human relationship going beyond the bounds of what usually forms the friendship. It's true that dogs love exercise, and that humans usually have to walk them to keep them happy and in shape, but not to this extent. You almost have to wonder how many other people could be helped in this way if they take the initiative. His experience was so transformative that he wrote a book called Walking with Petey, The Dog Who Saved My Life. Number 7. A Crow's Tale there was a kid named Gabby Mann from Seattle, Washington, and one day she decided to do something nice for some crows that frequented her home. She didn't have to, but she wanted to, and the crows seemed to realize that because they decided to do something nice for her. Wait, so what did she do? Well, she fed them, that's all. Many people have fed birds in the past and had nothing happen to them save for happy bird calls, but for Gabby, it paid off in dividends. Not long after this cycle of feeding the crows began, they returned to Gabby with little items and trinkets, beads, buttons, shiny metal objects, whatever they could put into their mouths and fly to her. This has happened multiple times and technically still goes on to this day, to the point where Gabby actually displayed the items to show off what the crows were giving her. To some, this may not seem like an unusual thing. But you must think of it in the grander sense. These crows were apparently so moved by Gabby's kindness that they wanted to get her gifts. 
So how does a bird understand the notion of giving gifts, let alone ones to humans? Another question, how did they recognize that the items they gave her would please her? They were all human items. No rocks or worms or bugs. They gave her human items so she might enjoy them. How do they know about all this? It really makes you wonder about how smart animals really are. Because for these crows at least, they're pretty smart. And Gabby was grateful for that intelligence. And now for number six, but first let me know about your pets in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to World List and click that notification bell if you're new here. Number six, three lionesses saved a kidnapped girl. When bad things happen, you hope that something good will happen to counter. But what you don't expect is animals to come to humans' aid when a terrible human act occurs, such as the case with three lions who actually saved a girl from her kidnappers. This happened in Ethiopia, where a little 12-year-old girl was taken by four men with their goal to try and get her to marry one of them. They held her captive for over a week, and then the police finally got onto their trail. But they were too late at first. The kidnappers took the girl and ran, but they literally ran into a trio of lions, which no doubt was a shock to all of them, including the girl. The lions scared the kidnappers away by their mere presence, and when they did, the kidnappers left the girl. Usually you'd think this would end with the lions doing harm to the child, but the opposite happened. Reports say that the girl was crying when the lions saw her, and they thus believed she was but a young cub, and so they protected her in case the kidnappers came back. It's pretty unusual, but it's also very remarkable. The police eventually got to where the girl was, and they were certainly amazed by the sight. She was unharmed by the lions, and they willfully let her go so she could return home. This is not something you would expect from lions, who often have a rather tenuous nature with humans, especially when they appear on their grounds without an invitation. Yet they knew this child was not a threat and was in trouble, proving that animal instincts and protective natures can go beyond what is expected of them. And if you're curious about her kidnappers, they were caught and tried for their crimes. Good. Number 5. Grace and the Cat Having a pet can be multifaceted, and even with wild animals, there are uses called therapy animals that help people get through stress and mental conditions. Grace Helmshaw has a very serious mental condition, autism, and it would be a cat that helped her get through some of the worst stages of it. Autism comes in many forms, if you didn't know, and this particular brand of autism made it so she didn't sleep at regular times. She wouldn't look at people. She refused to interact with others, too. This condition had made her a recluse, which was a big stress on her parents. And for a while, they didn't know what to do. But then they got an idea. We'll get her a cat. So they got Grace a cat named Thula. And Grace started to interact with Thula almost immediately, which showed that this truly was the right decision. What's even better, though, and something that the parents couldn't have possibly expected, was that Thula got Grace to speak. She would actually form commands for Thula, and the cat would listen, encouraging more chatter. This led to even more advances in communication and action for Grace. And while she still had autism, Thula was helping her work through it, which no doubt made the parents very happy. Autism is one of those rare conditions where there's no playbook in regards to what you need to do in order to get the child with autism to understand you, what you're asking of them, or getting them to do certain things like talk or even look at you. For all intents and purposes, Thula should not have worked in regards to getting her to do those things, yet she did. Number 4. I'm not a lion. There are many animals that people dream of raising on their own, and definitely high up on that list is a lion. After all, they're the king of the jungle, and the biggest of the big cats in many people's estimations, though technically I guess tigers are bigger. But we're also told they're vicious predators, so we should keep our distance from them. Well, no one told that to Aceberg and John Rendell, for they actually bought a lion cub, which isn't legal anymore for people outside of zoos, but they bought them back in 1969. They called the lion Christian and raised him for about a year. But as all big cats do, Christian grew up, and he grew bigger than they could personally take care of. So Ace and John had to decide what to do in regard to what was best for them and for Christian. They settled on sending him back to Africa where he belonged. A tough choice to be sure, but in this circumstance, it was the right one. Fast forward a few years and these guys were missing their lion. So they went on a trip to Africa to try and find him. And when they arrived, they were told that trying to find their lion would be near impossible, as no one had seen him in a while. 
No one told that to Christian, though, who not only found them, but recognized them instantly and gave them the affection that it used when it was a cub. Better still, Christian now led a pride of his own. We called him and he stood up and started to walk towards us very slowly. Then, as if he had become convinced it was us, he ran towards us, threw himself on us, knocked us over, knocked George over, and hugged us like he used to with his paws on our shoulders. The family had two reunions over the years, and both times Christian recognized them both. Number 3. Daniel Green and the Boa Constrictor Arguably one of the most controversial cases of human and animal friendship comes from Seattle with a man named Daniel Green. He in particular has a friendship with a therapy animal that helped save his life. In this case, save him from seizures. While this may not seem odd at first, it should be noted that the therapy animal was a Boa Constrictor. According to Green, the boa constrictor that he has named Red Rock is one that he wears around his neck. And Green also notes that when he's close to having a seizure, the snake will hug him and alert him that he needs to either sit down or prepare for what's coming. If this is true, then you can understand why Green is very protective of his snake and he wears it wherever he goes. But this is where the twist comes in because a lot of people aren't sure that he's telling the truth. And because he's protected by certain laws that allow therapy animals to happen, they can't do much. But this case has brought to light a lot of misgivings about certain exotic therapy animals. I know a lot of people with service animals, and they really do provide a service. In most cases, they allow folks to be more independent. But when you throw in an unusual or exotic service animal, that tends to discredit folks with standard service animals. They have a hard enough time gaining access to public accommodations. And it's even harder when business owners read about the unusual service animals. Candy Harrington, editor of Emerging Horizon Set, which is a magazine for disabled travelers. In many ways, this case is still ongoing. Number 2. Mary and Her Gator Mary Thorne found a baby alligator when it was very small, and she decided to keep it, which is contrary to myths about what is done with baby gators. And for over 11 years, she happily raised her young alligator named Rambo. But here's where things get interesting. Mary went above and beyond the call to ensure that her pet alligator was a responsible and interactive pet. She actually trained the alligator in regards to where to go to the bathroom. Then she taught it to understand sign language. And if that wasn't cool enough, it knows how to sit itself and ride upon a quad bike. This is not normal behavior for an alligator, even a pet alligator. Yet Rambo seems just fine with it. The only real catch in their relationship was that she had to move to a bigger house with a larger plot of land so that Rambo could be happy and move around in open spaces, as well as follow the law. But she did it, and they're still together. Number 1. The Goose Couple Anyone who has been around geese knows that there's two forms of a goose. The kind that is grateful for the bread you give it, and the kind that'll attack you mercilessly for getting in its way. In the case of Dominic Ayler, he was just going about his way near a lake and feeding the geese nearby when one of them started to follow him. He didn't think about it at first. The goose likely just wanted his bread, but the goose kept following him. And when he returned the next day, the goose came back to him. This was Dominic's first meeting with Maria. She thinks she owns me, Dominic said. Other geese aren't allowed to be near me on account of Maria. These two are now basically inseparable. Every time Dominic arrives at the park, Maria shows up, and the two will go for walks around the nearby lake. Why the goose feels so attached to Dominic isn't clear, but she clearly feels something for him. Well, thanks for watching. What did you think of these unusual friendships that people have had with animals? Can you believe that some of these things actually happened? Which of them do you think was the most shocking of the bunch? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to World List, and I'll see you next time.